subscribe now and press the bell icon never miss an update hello in this video we will discuss the poem because i could not stop for death written by emily dickinson first of all let us have a brief introduction to the poem because i could not stop for death written by emily dickinson was published after her death in 1890 The poem has six stanzas and each stanza consists of four lines. The poem does not have a fixed rhyme scheme. In the poem, the speaker encounters death when death stops his carriage and takes the speaker on a supernatural journey with immortality on board. Death is personified as a gentle friend and the speaker feels peace in the company of death. Immortality, death and time are the dominating themes in the poem. Let us now look at the poem. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just our selves and immortality. Death and immortality have been personified here. They have been attributed with human qualities. Death is the carriage driver and immortality is the passenger along with the speaker. Now in these lines, the speaker says that she could not stop for death. but death kindly stopped his carriage for her there were three passengers on it death the speaker and the eternal life she is perfectly at ease in the company of death death is the end of all human sufferings in this mortal world we slowly drove he knew no haste and i had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility now look at this phrase we slowly drove Draw is the post of drive. Now the question is who draw slowly? Actually the pronoun we refers to death, the speaker and immortality. So death, speaker and immortality draw slowly. Look at another phrase. He knew no haste. Now the question is who knew no haste? He refers to death. Death has been personified and he has been used as a pronoun instead of death. In the next line and i had put away the pronoun i refers to the speaker civility means polite behavior or gentle nature the speaker says that they drove their carriage slowly for death was not in any kind of hurry and for the speaker she left her work and her pleasures for his gentle nature by civility the speaker means to say that death is not so cruel as we have portrayed it We passed the school where children stroll at recess in the ring we passed the fields of gazing grain we passed the setting sun stroll is the post of strive which means to try very hard to achieve something or it can mean compete during their journey they passed by a school where children were competing at school in a ring game during the break then they passed by the grain fields and at last they passed by the setting sun in this stanza death allows the speaker to look into her past and she remembers her childhood and her pride before death occupies her children playing in the school may refer to her childhood and grand fields may refer to her pride while setting sun symbolizes her old age or rather he passed us the dew is dew quivering and chill for only gossamer my gown my tippet only two quivering means shivering chill means cold gossama refers to any very light fine material tippet is a long piece of fur worn in the past by a woman around the neck and shoulders tulle is a type of soft fine cloth made of silk cotton or nylon and full of very small holes in this stanza The speaker changes her tune and says that they actually didn't pause the sun but sun passed them. After the sunset, dew formed and there was a quivering cold in the air. She was shivering because she was only wearing gown made of gossamer and a tippet around her neck which is made of tulle. We paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible. the cornice in the ground here the house 
presumably refers to the speaker's newly dug grave. Swelling is the condition of being larger or rounder than normal, but here it means mound. Scarcely means hardly. Cornice is a border around the top of the walls in a roof or on the outside walls of a building. Then they stopped their carriage near a house which looked like a swelling on the ground. Its roof was hardly visible and its ceiling was in the ground. In the previous stanza, the speaker mentioned sunset which symbolized old age. Now in this stanza, she is in front of her eternal home, the grave, which is raised high like swelling. Except its roof, nothing is visible. Since then, it is centuries and yet feel shorter than the day. I first surmised the horse's heads were toward eternity. Feel shorter than the day means feels like just yesterday. Surmise means to guess or suppose. Now centuries have passed since the speaker encountered the death on the horse carriage and she feels as though less than a day has gone. The poem seems to be telling a recent memory, but this all actually happened a really long time ago. It is the day she realized that Death's horses were headed in the direction of eternity.